Hi, everyone, and welcome back to twitch.tv slash AWS. Uh, I'm Abby, I'm back again with Julian, and I'm here with Brandon from the EKS team. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit about EKS. Uh, Brandon, can you tell me a little bit about what you do here at AWS and, and what, what EKS is? Um, I wanted to know real quick, where's the food? Uh, the food... I thought this was lunch pad. Ooh, no. no? Okay, sorry, okay, uh, back I on ate track. All the, I ate all the lunch. All right, okay, <laughs> misunderstanding. Anyway, I guess I'll, we'll push through. Um, so I'm Brandon Chavis, I'm the product manager for EKS, uh, which is Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes. Uh, and this is a managed service we've built to help make running Kubernetes on AWS easy. Uh, because customers have told us that running Kubernetes isn't the most trivial thing. Uh, there's a lot of work when it comes to standing it up, scaling the masters, making sure that everything's working as it should be. Uh, so we think that we can help out a little bit there, use some of our uh, knowledge when it comes to running open source software as a managed service and doing that at scale. Uh, and so we're bringing that to you with EKS and giving you a set of APIs that let you provision Kubernetes clusters. So uh, two startup questions. What is the, what, what is supported in EKS? And I know that since it's still in preview, I've had a lot of people ask how they could sign up for the preview. So could you direct us to the preview and then also tell us a little bit about what's <laughs> going to be supported in, in EKS yeah. in the preview? So, um, how you can sign up is you can go to aws.amazon.com slash EKS, and one of the first buttons available to you is a sign up for preview button. Fill out some information about yourself, be truthful, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, and then when you say what's supported in EKS, um, I'll try to answer that at a high level, and I'll see if we can kind of refine that in a little bit here. High level is great, because I think a lot of people have wanted to know, is it, van is it vanilla Kubernetes? Is yes. it the same version that I can run myself? So tell us a little bit. Okay, so I mean, we are supporting upstream and native Kubernetes. So awesome. we're starting in the preview with Kubernetes 1.7. Uh, we'll work to continuously add new releases as soon as we can. Um, but I think when you ask what's supported, um, we kind of want to address that by saying Kubernetes is supported. So if you're using something today uh, in like the open source ecosystem, if there's tooling you're using, you can bring that to EKS without any modification or worrying if it's going to work. There's no funky AWS stuff tied in here. It's all open source, native, upstream Kubernetes. I think that was the PR approved way that I was getting at that was, is yeah. it going to be the same version of Kubernetes that, that, every, that totally, everyone man. wants? Uh, so I'm getting a couple <laughs> common questions. Is how often are you going to update to the latest Kubernetes release? And is it going to match the current version? Will there be a little bit of a lag time? Yeah, um, so for the latter, I'm not sure because we're only on one version currently. We'd like to do uh, release, add new releases as quickly as we can. But the general strategy here is to give you the uh, ability to launch one of three versions, right? So we want to support the current version and the previous two. Gotcha. This way, by doing that, you have kind of like some flexibility over your own upgrade cadence, and you're not forced to have like the latest version if you're not ready for it, for example. And I saw something about that I could do, I could opt in to minor version upgrades through 3KS. That's correct. So the upgrade strategy here is you can turn on automatic upgrades if you want to, um, and that way, when a new minor version is available, and let's level set real quickly. If we're talking about Kubernetes like 1.75, for example, 1 is major, 7 is minor, 5 is patch, right? So when you have a new minor version available, say 1.7 is out now, and then 1.8 comes out in EKS, uh, that automatic upgrade feature will give you the ability to go to 1.8 automatically. As far as patch level updates go, though, so that dot five, we'll make sure that whenever new patches are available, they're pushed to your cluster regardless. Gotcha. So. Yesterday, Andy mentioned that 63% uh, of uh, Kubernetes cloud workloads run on AWS. Yeah. I guess this raised a few eyebrows here and there. <laughs> so this means, uh, if anything, that we have a lot of existing customers who run Kubernetes on EC2. That's correct. What's going to be the difference? What's going to be the uh, developer experience like with, uh, with EKS? Right? How do I start a cluster? How do I manage it? Uh, how does that compare to ECS? Is there a CLI? All those good stuff, <laughs> right? All the, we want to know. So, so there's a few questions there. I'll try to get to them, man. We'll see. And you have all the questions 30 at seconds. once. <laughs> I have 30 seconds. Uh, what was the first one? <laughs> uh, so the experience, the way that it differs from running Kubernetes yourself on AWS today uh, is that there should be a lot less manual involvement in getting a cluster stood up, making sure it stays running, and handling the upgrade process. I think a lot of the feedback that our customers gave us originally was like, this is very time intensive. Like yeah. managing Kubernetes, I have 
have to dedicate several ops people to doing this, especially if we're doing it at scale. Uh, if we have to you know, change the size of our masters, for example, that can be hours and hours or days. It might take us weeks to go from minor version to minor version. So right. I think just in that respect, there'll be a lot less manual operational burden in running Kubernetes. Um, I think in terms of like what you're running on Kubernetes though, in terms of like the uh, open source tooling you're using, much of that will remain the same. You'll still be able to bring all of that stuff and all of your existing Kubernetes know-how to EKS. And okay. that's really our priority, is maintaining that open source compatibility with um, what's available now with Kubernetes running it yourself. So there are other questions in there that I didn't answer. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so um, how do I start a cluster? I mean, it, obviously we're going to provide APIs to do that. Yeah. Uh, is this the uh, AWS CLI? Do you have the EKS CLI? What, what, what's in the works here? Yeah, good question. So there's, a, there's a, a few different ways. One is we do have a console, right? So you can sure. press a button, put in some information. You can also use a CLI or an SDK. So we have a couple of SDKs. Right now it's create cluster, list cluster, delete cluster, and describe cluster. So yeah, well it's very that's, straightforward. That's what we need, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's all you need to get started. Yep. Everyone can get started somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so, but when you create that cluster, we automatically stand up a highly available control plane for you, and so we do you know, all the heavy lifting in the background, right. and we abstract yeah, all this complexity. Yeah, the and the different AZs. Exactly. That's gold, right? That's pure gold. Exactly, yeah. so you get HA just by default by calling create cluster. Um, you do have to pass some information to us, so you have to do things like you need an AR, you need to give us the ARN of a role that we can use to create resources in your account. So for example, Kubernetes can do things like create a load balancer on your behalf, so we want to make sure we, we have the permissions to create a load balancer sure. in your account where your worker nodes run. Okay. Which segued nice. me really nicely into one of the Twitch questions, which is will EKS support load balancer integrations? They say ELB, but I'm going to open that up to every kind of load balancer. <laughs> yeah. So will I be able to use load balancers with EKS? Um, so I can kind of go back to one of my earlier uh, answers, which is like, whatever works in Kubernetes today will continue to work. So um, as far as like the classic load balancer goes, right, that's already supported in Kubernetes. You can right. use that, you create a service of type load balancer, Kubernetes spins, spins one, up, one up for you. But the new network load balancer has now recently been upstreamed into Kubernetes. So in newer versions, you can use the NLB for L4 load balancing versus the classic load balancer. Uh, there is also the ability to use an application load balancer through the CoreOS ingress controller, uh, and that works well today. Uh, notably, Ticketmaster uses that in production and it seems to work well for them. Which also answered a second Twitch question at the same time. <laughs> Bonus, asking about ingress resources. Um, another question from Twitch, uh, will EKS have any kind of automatic scaling based on desired containers? So I think they're looking for an equivalent of the ECS desired count. Sure. Uh, so that's kind of a multifaceted question, right? So as yes. far as the masters go on our end, we will scale those transparently for you based on you know, metrics that make sense for your cluster. So we'll monitor it, we'll make sure that you have consistent performance. Um, as far as what is running on the worker nodes in your account, you can bring the existing Kubernetes uh, auto-scaling mechanism. So the cluster auto-scaler, the horizontal pod auto-scaler, these things work already in AWS. Um, there probably are some uh, rough edges that we could probably smooth out to make it work better with different scaling triggers inside of AWS, so things like uh, different CloudWatch metrics or alarms or something like that. But in general, the answer is yes, you can use all the existing Kubernetes auto-scaling functionality uh, in EKS. Awesome. Um, and will EKS integrate with ECR? Yes. Yes. That yeah. was a short answer, guys. Yeah, it's good. just yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So it sounds like at a high level kind of summary wise, any, anything that's possible in Kubernetes right now is you, you're just using the same Kubernetes as, as you would anywhere else. So you yeah. can do it in Kubernetes. You can do it in EKS too. Um, <laughs> well, there are and then we're working on some stuff like the more AWS versions of things like sure. CloudWatch events. Yeah, I mean, I think there are probably some caveats to that, right? Because right. this is a managed service. So we are managing the masters. So you like you can't schedule your workloads on the masters for obvious reasons. And also there might be some limitations in terms of like what you can configure on the masters because we do have to give you kind of a, an experience where you don't accidentally break things uh, when we're managing it for you. So there, there might be some situations where the masters, you don't have full access to them. You know, you can't go in there and just turn everything off because that wouldn't right. be a great experience if you did that on accident. So otherwise though, if you want to bring something to an ecosystem, KS cluster that works in Kubernetes today. The answer is yes, uh, it should work. So I, let's say yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a developer and I haven't really looked into uh, containers, and uh, now I've got ECS, mm -hmm. EKS, and Fargate, yeah. uh, and of course you, you've got that EKS T-shirt, and uh, I like to have one too. Uh, I'm sure we'll Abby has one. got 20 of them. I have zero of them actually. Really? So <laughs> she needs one too. So how would you try and uh, you know uh, help me out here? Uh, 
Should I look at all three? Should I go Fargate because it's simpler? Um, what, what are my options here? So I think one of the reasons that customers asked us for EKS in the first place is because they're already using Kubernetes on-premise or uh, maybe they're running it themselves on AWS. They've already made investments in Kubernetes and they wanted to continue to do that, right? Um, they were really looking for like that single extensible API that Kubernetes gives you uh, and they can use it across multiple environments. So you know, hybrid is a huge, huge use case for Kubernetes today. Um, you can even run Kubernetes locally on your laptop with Minikube, yeah. for example, right? So um, there's some advantages there. I think if you're looking for something that has the tightest AWS integrations um, and you know, something where AWS can give you very opinionated and, and well integrated um, integrations with the rest of the platform, that's where ECS like, really shines. Um, I really like Fargate also and we're looking for ways to you know, make that available to EKS in the future. But uh, as Andy alluded to in the, in the right. keynote yesterday, um, but I think it's, uh, it's definitely, a, a, it comes down to culture and preference sure. and, and what works for your company. Any differences when it comes to security, which is priority zero? Any, any difference between ECS and EKS? Yeah, there are differences. I mean, so, uh, you know, we can look at like the way task networking works in ECS today, right? And that's where you get an E&I and a security group at the task level. Um, the way that we do networking in EKS is a little bit different. Uh, we use, I'm going to get into a little bit of depth here without it supporting yeah, diagram, it. but, you know, <laughs> so we have a CNI plugin also that gives us native VPC networking, but we're not using just a single ENI per pod. We're using ENIs and then secondary IP addresses attached to those ENIs. As you know, all the secondary IP addresses on an ENI share the same security group. So that means all the pods on the same ENI share the same security group. Okay. So the way that security is handled is a little bit different. You actually use the Kubernetes network policy API to handle fine-grained security controls, whereas in ECS, you can use AWS security groups right. to build that uh, security boundary. Um, that's a little bit different. It's also, the IAM role story with ECS is a little bit more mature, a little bit more battle-tested, and again, one of those examples of where ECS is very well integrated to AWS on the back end, and so you get that really strong guarantee of security at the task level with ECS. Okay, so the, the discussion and the you know, the religious war will go on for a while, and, uh, and that's best, right? Yeah. Because choice is good, and, uh, and you know, more, more toys, right? If for the queen of containers. If we're not fighting about ECS <laughs> versus EKS, we'll be fighting about something else, like oh, tabs yeah, yeah, still, sure. so it's always, it's, al <laughs> it's always something, and I think the, the, when, when you give people options, it makes the ecosystem stronger. So sure. it, ECS Absolutely. is stronger by the presence of Kubernetes. Kubernetes is stronger by the presence of ECS. So it's I mean, I think good the, for everybody. I think the most important message really is like, you know, the compute organization at AWS, like the, the, you know, the directive here, the, the objective rather, is to support every workload our customers want to run, right? That's why you yeah. see things like a variety of different instance types or bare metal instances or like sure. the ability to attach GPUs to instances. Uh, you know, we don't, Want to get? Uh, we don't want to say you can't run certain orchestrators yeah. on AWS. We want to support them all or equally. All kinds sure of work. deep learning libraries, and you know, Absolutely. whatever you want to run. Yeah. Like I keep saying, you know, we work hard to make AWS the best place to run it, whatever it is, right? Yeah. I have and a, we have, and we have such an awesome and motivated community behind us. I mean, the growth uh, in terms of you know what you can do on AWS and Kubernetes over the past year is just tremendous. There's so many integrations, there's so many um, features that Kubernetes can take advantage of, and this is all just organic open source, gro open source right. growth, so it's great to see that kind of community behind us. I have some, some questions from Twitch in a statement. I've seen a couple questions, by the way, about asking when Fargate will support EKS. It's the other way around. When will you be able to run EKS uh, in Fargate mode? Uh, okay. And I believe that it's sometime in 2018 right now. Yeah. I don't have an exact date for you. Let's say the future. The future. Some date in the future. Sounds about right. Uh, <laughs> you can't disagree with that. I can't disagree it's with that. It's not now. Um, and then any some people asking also about cluster federation and whether I can use that to support multi-region. Yeah, so cluster federation is a very interesting topic, I think. Um, so I've had several customers ask for it, and I believe it's still currently an alpha feature in Kubernetes. So it's probably good to call out that we're not supporting alpha features and e EKS clusters right now, but beta or stable features will be supported. So if Federation does make it to a beta feature, then of course you can use it. Um, but of course, you know, we're always happy to change our minds based on feedback. So let us know how important Federation is and your use cases around that. Um, it's really important for us to hear that. So quick quick summary there. Uh, Federation is still in alpha. I might be wrong about that, but last as time far, I As far as we know from the last <laughs> time we looked it up. Uh, so in, in general, the process is with will we'll support stable or beta features, but not features that are in alpha. Correct. So uh, if, it's, if it's stable and people have, have tried it out and it's, it's relatively cool, then, then we'll go with that too. Right. Um, 
So sometime in the future, it looks like that's all the questions that I have from, from Twitch, because uh, I think we've answered most of these. Um, here's my final question, I guess. Is there anything, this is a new announcement. I know that people have been asking for it. Is there anything that you feel we should know about EKS that we haven't already, already covered? Oh man, what have we not covered? I, I mean, left that really open-ended for you, you're welcome. You really did. This is softball, it's lobbing them at me. Uh, I mean, I think the most important thing to take away from EKS is that this is native and upstream Kubernetes, right? And we plan on uh, supporting all of the AWS integrations that we can through the open source community. Um, and I really just kind of want to make that message uh, widely known. So if there's like a project out there that currently implements AWS functionality, we think probably the best way to support that is by getting behind that project and help uh, improve it and add features and functionality. Um, so, you know, we're completely committed to the open source approach with this project. Um, we think we absolutely have to have the support of the community to be successful here and to make our customers successful. So, you know, we'll do the hard work of like standing up the cluster and making sure it's HA and making sure it's secure and, you know, we're monitoring everything the right way and that everything's, you know, robust and run like an AWS service should be. And then for everything else, we like to work with the community and make sure that, um, you know, a lot of the work that we're doing for EKS can benefit people running Kubernetes on AWS even if they're not using our managed service. I mean, that's pretty much what I wanted, right? Is that the, the high availability part is the part that's frustrating oh, yes. for me. So <laughs> it, seems, it seems like kind of a good solution, right? Is that I, I keep the stuff that I like from Kubernetes, but I pass off some of the, the headache of high availability. Totally, you can take your pick from really nice AWS integrations or open source tooling, mix and match, use what works best for you. Um, we're not going to force you into one way or another. And the, you know, the beauty of Kubernetes is all the choice that you have today. Awesome. Uh, so we are wrapping up on the, on the, on the panel for right now. Uh, we will be back in just a little bit uh, with the next session. Brandon, thank you for so much for joining us. And we posted the link to, to join the, the preview uh, in, the, in the Twitch chat. So take a look there for more information on how you can try it out, because I've seen another, a couple questions like that also. So Brandon, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. It was awesome. Awesome. Thank you.